looks like that there was some confusion on within the MySpace, my workspace area uh, where to see service alerts and then also how to communicate with students. Uh, what do other folks think about that part of the test that they watched? So talking about row six in the data. Okay, uh, when, uh, what I noticed, uh, because I didn't take notes, but I just talked from my um, observation, so it looks like folks are not using the my workspace very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. They basically yeah. just go straight to the course. Yes. Yes. So when I, you ask, I would agree with what that. is the due date, they don't click on the calendar on the my workspace. It just basically just goes to the course. Yeah. And the only thing they finally check in the my workspace is the service alert and the message of the day because that's the only place that they know they can see the message of the day. Mm hmm Yeah, that's great. I'm gonna take some notes here. Oh, my yeah. trusty notepad. So notes, so people don't look to my workspace too much. Uh, what were some other habits that people noticed that we're observing from the three sessions that we facilitated? I noticed that they also don't look at the site homepage because there's also the calendar there for the course specific one, mm -hmm. but they go straight to the schedule. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to be part of, um, I don't know if it's that widget, but it's a similar widget on the site home as is on the My Workspace home, um, except it's site specific versus all courses. Mm -hmm. But people weren't looking at the one on the site home, they were going to the, the tool itself. Yeah, I, I noticed that as well. I noticed that I think one of the participants commented on uh, when they were in my workspace, they wanted to receive or access more of these global notifications by clicking the tools on the left in my workspace. And the tools on the left, it's a mix of personalized stuff just for you and then a uh, you know conglomerate of, of various site notifications. Uh, and if you think about how Sakai works in a course site, it's a tool-oriented uh, environment where you find out something by utilizing the tools on the left. Uh, and in my workspace, a lot of that stuff seems to be surfaced on the home page. So I'm wondering if that, that may be a reason why it's not utilized because there's a, a disconnect between the tools on the left and then the stuff that you see in the middle. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, and also they're not really, they're kind of mixed in together. They're yeah. not really categorized in any way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder um, when people learn to use Sakai, uh, did they think of Sakai as, as a whole or they just learn mm -hmm. individual tools? Uh, say, I want to check assignment deadline. They just go to assignment. Check a quiz. Yeah. They just go to quiz. But all of them can be aggregated, all the deadlines can be aggregated in the calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, really, people go to the calendar either in the course or in the My Workspace, just don't, don't go there. Yeah. Um, so is it design flaw or is it just people users' behavior? It just behave that way. Yeah. I don't think it's calendar either. I, users don't always uh, look at the message center notifications, the messages and forums for each site too. Right. They'll go to each individual mm -hmm. site yeah. and go to other messages. Yeah, there were... Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, Christina, that's a great point because there were a few questions in the script that we added purposefully regarding, you know, did your students update your forums, did your students send you a new message, where we wanted to see if they would look to that aggregate area on my workspace, and you're exactly right, all of them were going into the course site to see that information. I think also there's, Sakai is quite inconsistent. Some tools talk to each other, and other tools don't. Um, so users kind of figure that they don't talk to each other. They kind of assume that things aren't being cross-posted in the tools because some of them work together and some of them don't. I think you have a point there because we even have that same issue with gradebook. They don't know when things talk to the gradebook. So 
Yeah. Yeah. So if I have to think of anything, uh, when I log into the my workspace, I notice that the notification for the forum or the messages that a little box is way below uh, at the bottom of the page to the right, right? So yeah. if you focus on the top, uh, you immediately see the link to the course. You don't see the box uh, for the notification of forums and messages. Yeah. Uh, you of course you go to the course first. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I mm -hmm. wouldn't say that's a very efficient way of doing things. If you have an aggregated notification area, you know, by one glance you can see things mm -hmm. instead of going to each side and dig out the information. Uh, maybe user has formed this habit of going into each course because they 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 never thought that they could look at an aggregated area. Yeah. So you. By design, if we move those pieces around, move the notification area up or to the mm. left somehow, and they mm. can see they form new habits of looking at it. Maybe that would help them. Mm. Interesting, interesting. I thought yeah. it was interesting that, that when we talked about service alerts, yeah. everyone knew instantly to go to message of the day. Yeah, but they never look at it <laughs> 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 until we ask them to. But it, it, it brings up, it, it's an interesting thing, you know, do you, that, that seems to be the prime real estate area. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you do with that? You know, do you leave it the way it is? Uh, or do you utilize it kind of, Luis, in the way you were suggesting of maybe surfacing all the aggregate data better? Like, I think you have a very good point that it's in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Yeah. And it's not in a, a great spot to be powerful or meaningful uh -huh. in any way. Yeah. Is that default on all um, on all Sakai sites? I mean, I know I've moved mine around for particular sure. courses, but the workspace, I mean, that could be some really good testing to find out where people's eyes go. Yeah, so to do some eye tracking. Yeah. That'd be neat. I think people, like, the first time they log in, they read the message of the day, and they kind of say, oh, that's just the service message, and then they never look at anything else on the page, probably because when they first log in, there isn't any useful information there because they haven't done anything. And people just seem to gloss over, like get to their course right away. And also there's no changes. I mean, I think the Morpheus project showed that we need some sort of icon or identification that says, hi, this has changed. This isn't just everything's all okay today. We had the same issue with font size and color not changing. So people are just like, yeah, we're having an outage next week. I didn't see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and also, it's we call it message of the semester at NYU because yeah. we really don't change that very often. And I think if we did have some way of putting notifications there that are you know color coded or something, people will pay more attention to it and know that it it does change occasionally. Um, we we also have similar uh, issues with the color, uh, but it, it, it's kind of opposite. We color code our messages. But the color stays the same all the time. It's always the alert red in there. So they are used to it. They say, oh, OK, it's a red again. It's the old message. They don't take a second look at it at all. Um, unless the shapes or colors change drastically after one semester. Um, or sometimes it's how we word it. Uh, say, if we start with, dear faculty. And mm -hmm. possibly only faculty would look at it. Yeah. 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 So there are many things we can consider. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think one of you mentioned about the real estate on the page. Yeah. Uh, so if we look at each boxes, each box is pretty large. Um, so do we really need that huge box to occupy that space? Mm hmm. Uh, what if we make a small thumbnail image, uh, and uh, you know, you this way on the left, on the right, we make the two columns. We can yeah. fit or three or five, um, or more than six. Uh, I think more than six would be too many. Uh, maybe three or four boxes, uh, parallel to the message of the day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so for example, we can have a thumbnail for the messages. So usually it would be white, but when there's new things pop up, change it to red. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, it just yeah, idea. Be helpful. Um, yeah. And also just everything begins with my workspace, colon. Mm. Um, and I don't know how many um, usability tests I've seen um, and people say I don't work in you know my classes I don't work in Sakai you know they don't understand what my workspace is so uh, my account might work better or, or something like that just the, the terminology my workspace is is problematic I think yeah quite often when training people I have to say that my workspace is their like foyer when they come home before they go into their other rooms of their house because they just don't understand it's for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, and something else from the test that, that folks had a problem with uh, was here on row 10. So some people, actually I would say for most of the participants, they weren't sure how to modify their course tabs across the top. And I thought that was really interesting. They were going to different places. Some people would go to worksite setup. Um, others, they got to the right space, but they didn't know the difference between the drawer and their I, my active sites. Uh, they, they knew what archiving was. Um, but I'm curious to, to hear what other folks thought about that, that task that we asked the participants. Yeah, th that's very interesting because one of my, one of the people said that uh, he wants to click on the X button or remove, so it yeah. will be gone from the top. So instead of going preferences, you can just manage right there. You don't have to go anywhere else. I mean, why not? It's easy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but if you make it too easy to hide it and they don't know how to show it, if you have someone hide their active course, then, mm -hmm. whoops, my class is gone and I don't know how to get back into it. Uh, yes, that's another problem, too. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and I think in Sakai 10, with this, there's like three columns now. Yeah. It seems even a little more confusing, the user interface. Yeah, they, yeah. they implemented this thing called a drawer, which I'm not quite sure... I haven't wrapped my head around it yet. I actually think the drawer is easier to understand than the two columns it was before. Okay. Because before, with the two columns, it was only the first so many on the active list that would actually yeah. show up along the top. Mm. Mm. So now you've got the favorite sites, which are up along the top, all of them. There's the drawer, which is the ones that's under more sites, and then there's archive, which are not visible. Yeah. So you, it, I think it's easier to, so you're not having to worry about, oh, how many is going to show up? Oh, I need to change one more. Mm -hmm. Once yeah, I think, I think it just, um, I do like the drawer, but I just think that how it's displayed on the screen, it's, it's a little confusing. Um, and I think it could be better. So, But I, I think, you know, once you get it up and running, it's an improvement, but I think it's a little confusing to get it up and running. When we got it up and running here at Marist, the, um, the search feature, that, and having it, um, the items that are in the drawer, uh, sorted by uh, a semester. Yeah. Um, so between the search in the drawer, that, and being able to add a new site right from there, those items actually were benefits instead of yeah. uh, detriments. That part I, I love. I think it's great. But I think just this uh, customized tab page needs a little help. Yeah. That's confusing. Yeah. Especially when they, the four arrow keys gets there and, mm -hmm. and stuff. It's just not a very intuitive interface. Yeah. This is, this is all really great feedback. Uh, so we have about three minutes left, so I just want to be mindful of time. Um, and I think from our, our testing today, uh, two major issues came out of the data, which is awesome, because if you think about the time that we spent, it was, we only talked to three people, uh, and the same issue kind of came up. Uh, and that is not using the quick notifications that my workspace offers to answer questions such as, have your students sent you messages? Have they, you know, what's the deadline for something coming up? Um, so that was one observation. 
And then the other observation is that folks aren't sure how to properly uh, manipulate their, their tabs, their courses uh, within the system. Uh, does it, can anyone think of another theme or does that kind of capture everything that, that came out? Uh, for me, okay. I think that captures it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it's also pretty interesting. Um, even though you can be a psychiatrist, yeah, you still don't know. <laughs> yeah, you still mess up now. Yeah, <laughs> that we had one gentleman who was an admin. He he was very good. He just he didn't do it right either. I mean, right, not comfortably. Uh huh. Yeah, I prepared for this, so I, I know all the answers, kind of. Oh, okay. But, you know, if you give me just blindly, I don't know how well I would perform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. What about, does anyone else have any other feedback that's participating? And does anyone have any feedback on the whole uh, usability testing process and observing? I have never done um, usability testing before. I had read about the process, but I've never actually been involved in it. So it was actually kind of interesting to observe <laughs> and take notes and see how it all runs. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, I definitely see the value of multiple observers. So you all. Uh, provide different perspectives. Uh, I, I think uh, next time if we run it, we need to um, roll in the observer a lot earlier and tell them mm -hmm. what exactly we are looking for by asking people to perform these tasks. Ah, uh, so have them yeah. go through practice? Yeah, so th they would uh, uh, pay attention to something that uh, probably they would have never thought of. So, for example, yeah, when we say, you know, how do you provide help to your friends? Um, we, uh, we basically want to see if the participants go click on the help menu. Uh, I understand. I yeah, understand. so probably yeah. we have to uh, provide more um, inside stories to the mm -hmm. observers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. After looking at some of the... Uh, how some of the observers filled in the answer sheets. I definitely agree with that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that would also be useful for the facilitators. Um, I misread the, one of the questions, and I wasn't really sure what the answer was, so I had a, a trouble correcting myself. I think it was the fourth one as a student. Yeah, um, um, yeah I realized later on. <laughs> uh, I didn't look at the one closely either, so. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, if you participated in a session or just being here with us now mm -hmm. to talk through this information. Um, and I guess we will send along our results and findings, and maybe there's a kick-ass developer out there <laughs> that can take our data and make some magic happen. So uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you. Francesca. Thank you, thank guys. You. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye.